Yeah, so we start off with a clap usually. We get the logo up. It's become a thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So welcome back to Unsigned Berlin. And I totally should have checked how to say your name. Well, do you want your stage name or... The real name. Yeah. yeah how do you say your real name? name? Oh, okay. Stage name, Dami Das. Dami Das, nice. Um, do you even know the real name? I have it written here, but I'm going to absolutely <laughs> butcher it. Is it Dami I, I, Lola I, mm. Adani? Yes. Not bad. You go- oh, bro. Thank you. Impress, impress, <laughs> impress. Um, yeah, so we're going to start off with a snippet of your latest release, Stay With Me. I won't make you stay with me. She no one disability, yeah. She just want disability, yeah. Deep, deep, deep inside of me, yeah. Do to me, yeah. I won't make you stay with me, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was Stay With Me for Dami Das. Um, you do the songwriting yourself. Are you also producing, playing instruments? What does that kind of look like behind the scenes? I don't play the instrument by myself. Mm-hmm. I have like a guitarist and I have like producers that do the whole production stuff. Mm-hmm. But for me, I do bi- music. Uh, I said basic. <laughs> I do basically the singing part. Okay, right. So I do like the easy job amongst the group. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it's still like the artist job of, doing, <laughs> of having the taste, which yeah. is what people. So I do, I do the singing, I do the writing of the lyrics, coming up with the melody lines and everything. Um, funny enough, I'm supposed to be doing the production by myself, <laughs> but I'm, I'm kind of blessed to have like great minds around me wherever I go to. I went to music school. Mm-hmm. To learn how to produce. Right. But when I got to music school, my seniors in school, when they heard what I could do with my voice, they became my producers. Yeah, okay, yeah. So they made me lazy. Mm-hmm. Rather than like making the stuff by myself. Yeah. I had people that have been doing it before me do it. Even when I came to Berlin, mm-hmm. I traveled to Prague and I found this amazing producer. And we've been working ever since. So even when I'm traveling, I carried my like uh, my sound card and my mic, mm-hmm. hoping that when I come here, I would like record by myself. But when I came here, like the team just came together. Yeah, I have a I have guitarist, I have the producer, so I don't even have to stress too much with the production part of it. And even more. More people want to work like, oh, let's work on something. I'm a producer, mm-hmm. I'm a producer. So it's like, yeah. let me focus on the voice and the writing of the song rather than stress myself with like... Yeah. I mean, if it works, then like... Exactly. No reason to complain. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, and the song, um, Stay With Me, you collaborated with Malak for the music video and also for the song? Yeah. Just the music video. Not sure. Just the music video. Right. How did Funny. you get to know her? Oh, Malak, a beautiful soul, one of my very, very good friends here in Berlin. So how I met her was in a show. I was I was performing in a show. So she heard me. She was like really impressed. And I liked her, her energy. It was like really, really good. I was like, okay. And she was like, we we're going to make a song together. We we're going to collab. I was like, okay. <laughs> if you don't text me when you say we we're going to collab, I think it's like a cliche thing to say. Because once you're impressed in that night, you may not call or yeah, text yeah. Mm-hmm. after some time. But luckily, we ran into each other somewhere. Mm-hmm. And we're like, yo, da, 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 da. <laughs> we're supposed to meet for a collaboration. She was like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to a studio. Let's meet up there. I was like, okay, cool. So we went to a studio for like a jam session and all that. And... Uh, while we were jamming, I was just freestyling and I came up with this song and I was like, yo, I really like this song. And I was like, I was telling my guitarist, we have to record this song. It was not with her. Mm. Like, I didn't like make the song with Mala. Yeah, yeah. It was just like my own freestyle. Yeah. So when we were like doing the whole process, she was like, yo, anything you want me to do, like support wise for this song, mm-hmm. I would gladly help out. I was like, okay. You're going to yeah. be in the video <laughs> and you're going to be the main um, female character. Mm-hmm. And she was like, yes, game. She'll be on or two. And I was like, yeah, that's what's up. And I called my um, videographer. Even before the audio was ready, mm-hmm. we shot the video. 
Nice. I that mean, was... it makes sense as well. If it, if it, like, it doesn't have to be mixed to do the video. Eggs. I was like, I had the demo already. I was like, I really like this song. I don't want anything to delay it. And because mm-hmm. in my head, I outgrow song real fast because my head processes real fast, like creation processes. Right. And I get tired of some songs sometimes. Yeah. I think it's an artist thing. So I was like, before I lose the energy I have for this song right now, I had to like lay it down. So I was like, let's make a video ASAP. Mm-hmm. Now the money is there and the energy is right. Let's do it. I will make a video. We were supposed to put it out in May. But the production was delayed. Right. So I just like, okay, my birthday is on the 15th. Let's put it out on the 15th. Oh, nice. And it came out right. And I'm glad for the reception. Mm-hmm. You make a lot of videos for like a lot of the songs that I found. You also have music videos for. There's like lots of visual things that you do. Um, is that just because it interests you? Or do you feel like you kind of have to for social media kind of things? Or... Um, I think the visual is really, really important in this day and age. You see, like the human, um, how would I call it? Like when they see something, they feel more connected to it. Just mm-hmm. like myself, I see some music videos and I really like the song even more. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, why can't I shoot a video for all the songs I'm putting out? Like mm-hmm. a visual, even if it's not something to elaborate but something like really beautiful and artistic in a way. Yeah. And I'd be like, okay, we could do this. I just come up with like really nice ideas. I'd be like, okay. Even if the budget is not like a hundred thousands or two hundred thousands, <laughs> yeah. we could do something like really creative and we just make like something really dope. And when people see it, they'll be like, yo, these videos look expensive. I'd be like, yo. Only if you know how creative we used to like make everything happen the way it is. Yeah. And it's like, I'm, I'm glad the visuals like really help boost the music. Mm-hmm. Is there anything over the last two years of making music videos that like you kind of, especially with a low budget, you learned to do, they just saw a really big jump in quality and you're like, wow, these are so much better now we're doing this. It's annoying. There's one that stands out to me as well and I can't remember what the name is. <laughs> but Tell me, tell me. I think I grow over time. Like, the more I keep going, the more I keep getting mm-hmm. a whole lot more. Yeah. But tell me, tell this me. This Falling in Love. Yeah. It's a really, like, nice-looking video. It looks really, like, crisp and very, very... If, 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 I, if I tell you how much I shot Falling in Love, <laughs> that day, I almost bashed my parents' car. Oof. <laughs> that day... The electricity went out. I almost cried at the video shoot. Uh, Yo, falling in love is. I just, I just like the fact that it was a really, really beautiful song and it came out right. I shot mm-hmm. some of those videos in my house. Yeah, and it was, it was, it was, it was amazing. Like there were too many things that happened on the day of falling in love, but <laughs> when it came out, ooh, that was the first song I premiered on TV. I had like a bunch of interviews and everything. Mm-hmm. My dad was singing the song while it's listening to song. me on TV. And I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> Mama made it. <laughs> I was like, I was, I, was, I was so glad. I was gassed. I was gassed. Like the reception was good. I, I, I was in a TV interview when uh, the second premiere.
what the white end of the music and clap. But I never saw myself as just one. But that's why I'm so glad that when I came here and I started singing, and the way they received my sound, either I did do the Afro beats, the soul, or the R&B, and then the audience always gravitated towards it. I was performing outside all the time, and I was singing, and it was like, at some moments, we, we forgot our lyrics, and I started freestyling, and there were like audience in front of us. And I just started saying, thank you, da 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 da, I was freestyling. And a young lady, I just, I saw her from afar, she was looking at me like this, like she wanted to cry. Yeah. Like, it was so soulful that I touched her so much. Then she came to me at some point, as she held my face and gave me a pet, and she was like, thank you. That me my day. Yeah, that's the dream. I was the... like, yo, why Taylor Jackson do this to me? <laughs> How does this effect on people? Even my voice to do this. Yeah. Our dreams are coming true, bro. You know, that that's the essence why we're making music to give people this kind of feeling is that they'll live all with like for a long time. You know, those kind of feelings that you can't explain. You'd be like, the voice is just so beautiful. I just want to listen to it on and on again. Yeah, yeah. That 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 makes me feel so good. And Berlin, you say it's not a home for Afrobeat, but ever since I've been here. Every show I perform my iPhone bit, I mean, they be dancing. Yeah. I think you see the international like, community here has a lot of music that is either I've read to kind of like uh, dance or type of rhythm. Yeah. Or like, there's a lot of like, talent as well. I think um, you said, yeah. yeah. With Afro beat, after beats is like a universal and music is yeah, you know, martial art. And with the whole publishers and everything, you don't even have to understand the words that they are saying. Yeah. I listen to Indian music sometimes. I didn't listen to like Arabic music sometimes. I listen to everything. Sometimes I don't understand the words of the song, but the rhythm is good, the flow is nice, and everything is aligning so good. And you could just keep repeating the song. I don't understand shit you're saying, but it's sounding good to my ears. It has music for you. And then, that was why when I came here and I played my music and they were gravitating towards it, they were like, I like this. And then, like, they were dancing. And at some point, there was a show I was in, I was performing. And at some point, I think someone kicked the wire and I, uh, the music box stopped. Uh, and the next time, the audience started singing my song. I was like, a dear I was like, yes. <laughs> This is the first time I'm thinking myself for them. And then and they were singing my song. I was like, I was gassed. Yeah. I was gassed. I was gassed. So I think it doesn't have to be like a market for instance. Mm -hmm. But let them listen to the force. Yeah. They will gravitate towards it. It's good music. Yeah. Good music crosses everywhere. Mm -hmm. Look at how Afrobeat has come from Africa and is dominating in so many parts of the world right now, I'm here. I could sing so many Afrobeat songs that you sing that all to me because you know it. Yeah. I feel like actually over like the past five years or so, at least for me, maybe it was just because I wasn't like discovering as well music before that, but it's where they can be a big growth. It's really huge. Right now, the growth is enormous. Like the Rema, the Bonaboy, Whiskey, the yeah. Video. Bro, like headlining festivals in Germany. Bro, well, where it's like it's a German festival and then like with kids out of headlining, you're like, eh. bro. Yeah. And it makes it makes me so proud because those people have made ways for us now. They made it easier for us to like get into the market. I mean, but I'm not just going to stick to only down the market. I want to enlarge my coast. I mean other kind of music. So I love Afrobeat so much. I mean. But I sing all that kind of music too. I make soul sometimes. I make R&B sometimes. It depends on the instrumental I played, in mm -hmm. all how I feel. Yeah. It comes. Is there a specific, like subgenre or all in the country? Like I don't know, like Brazil or India that really stands out for something you really mm -hmm. might get excited to experiment with. Um, the Spanish, the Spanish music. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's like the Pakushas or something. 
But I just know that I want to do something with the Spanish. Like Latin urban kind of song. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know what they put in their music. Was I not even I don't like the bachelor that I did. Oh, they're not bad. Now they have like a special sound. I really, really, really gravitate towards. Apart from them, which other people? Um, I think the UK guys and both of those are very connect. Like in terms of UK R and B, both of those are still like very connected to like the Orient theme from African music because it's all like true there, bro. And I don't think there's any music that they come out to Africa. It's cool, man. It's general, but there's like specific rhythms you can look at for like, for especially those for like the air tongue, that's the thing like that, like the Indian, which is the same as like UK dancehall and it comes through still like the Caribbean influence. Most of them are really influenced by Africa. Yeah. And there's like strong um, growth of African migrants in those countries already. We realized them already. Like, yo, my friend, I play you some Afro beats and you listen to the words and you be like, yo, I'm stuck. Yeah. The sound is in my head, it's catchy. And then, and the next thing, you play for a friend and it spreads around. So that is how the growth has been. So you see them music like, so Afro beats is like a drill song and then all in some reggaeton yeah. or dance hall. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I mean, it's where, like, where it was going from. And there's like, Especially those those specific drummers, but very much. And how long is his music thing the goal for you? Is it just an always the jury? Think always from a young age. <clears throat> I as long as I can remember, man. You know there are specific things in your life that you just like they stick to your mind and. Mm -hmm. That they don't leave. I don't know. It's like preordained. I, I could remember the first CD my dad bought me because I wanted to remember it. You know, yeah. I was so young, but I asked him specifically for this CD because I wanted to be like, this is the first CD I got. It was an Incon. Because <laughs> I had influence from Big Gun, Selling Dion. At a very young age, I was like, I want to marry Sen and Dion when I was here. Yeah, but I, I'm not sure I was able to up to like 10 years old. And then, but listening to her song, the, the, the way she sounds, I was like, I want to marry Sen and Dion. Then, uh, then later on, I don't even know what she looks like on her age. She's the voice. Then I was like, yo, they said she's married. I was like, she's married? <laughs> she's married to a 60 year old man. I was like, but I thought, but, but I was like, I was at the little young voice, like from a very young age, I was like, I have to do music. Then in school, I used to look dance, I used to play drums. I love the drums. If no one is playing the drums, I'll be in the drums. If they tell us there's no stick to play the drums, I'll pick up like Landon, hey, Tips, and hit the drum. I could remember all those memories vividly. Then when I went to high school, they brought the drums. The first day they brought the drums, I was so excited to hold the drums. I, I, I broke the sticks. <laughs> that was how much I loved music. I was like, yo. Then I was in the choir in my church. In school, I was in the choir. Then I met some two guys in junior high school. They were in my class. They were like really in tune with music and they were really talented. One is like really big right now in Nigeria. So I was like, okay, they were like a little crew in high school, <laughs> they should sing in the Then from there, we went to the uni and everything. Then I kept making music and I performed in front of my school means I was like, wow. Like, okay, okay, I can do it. I love this shit, but I'm, I'm liking this even more. And then, and the more I went, the more I just, the love just grew here. Now it's like, I don't even know how to describe my love for music. It's like beyond words. And I love music so much. Like it's in my bloodstream. Like if you see me any day, look for our headphones. You would find headphones on me. And I'm always listening to something. You know, I'm listening to something. Is it I'm watching a movie or trying to get inspired from something? But I always think about music.
a whole lot. Like music is like, it means too much to me. Too much to me. Like it's so blood, everything you can think of. <laughs> so deep in my heart to me. How much of your time do you spend looking for you and music? A lot. <laughs> a lot. How like, how do you do it? Is it like YouTube or go to playlists or Twitter? Oh, oh okay. yes, it's around for it. It's like funny enough here. Yeah, I, I do tell my friends, if you want to make me happy sometimes, just give me a new song that sounds so nice. It's like you give me a gift. Yeah, I need it. It's like a physical gift you give to me. Cause I'll listen to that one song you give me for like two days straight. Then it's like I'm digesting the song, learning like everything that like the way the song is structured. Yeah. That's it just internalized. Then I look for another new one. Mm-hmm. And I'm on Twitter like regularly. I think the, my data consumption on Twitter Wait, man. massive because I love going to Twitter and Twitter is a huge space because like random stuff you can see Instagram also mm-hmm. and then sound like softening like, okay, okay. The reels just keep on it. I can hear something interesting be like, okay, I'm scrolled out. Shit, this sounds good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm softening for new music like Artists, some artists that you'll never heard of. And then, I mean, I've heard of them like days. <laughs> some artists that are new up now, I've not heard about them like way back. That show was great as well. Cause like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, you get to see them do well. And you're like, my guy, you yeah, haven't seen yet. It, 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 it makes me happy, one. Two, it makes me think about myself. I'm like, yo, I'm supposed to call up with this guy too. <laughs> I mean, like, it's just like one mystic came up. Whiskey was young, he was doing this thing. I was in high school then, or junior high school, I was like, this guy is starting there. I could do what he's doing. And in my head, I was like, okay, he's a young kid. I think I could. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that is good. But I don't know. Now he's like, well, we know what you hide. Yeah. I'm like, okay, my time is gonna come too. Then, so all the artists I discovered, like, way back, I'm like, okay. Okay, next day they're like, pa, pa, pa. Went out, I'm like, my time is gonna come. And I know my time is gonna come. He's a son. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, so one of the things where it's like, you, you discover them when they already in what, six years, and then there's a couple more years, and then it should off you like, oh, so quick. But well, you never know the bastard story in here. It's like, I would have never heard of it. And that, that was one of the reasons why you see, if you go to my list of our page, it's like a story, you see like the growths in it. Like from while I was young to like, that is the only one why I should document myself. Because some people don't understand like, we've been doing this for like a long time before we got to where we are now. Some people just see like the finished product and this is you know, in the process. People don't really even care about the process. In the end. They just care about if you make it and when you don't. But like, so we the creatives, all those processes are really, really important. Yeah. Like sometimes when I watch like the performers videos, it just brings this amazing, peaceful joy yeah. that you can't describe. Like you'd be like, you're leaving down the moment again. It just makes you like, what's keep those little worries. So the documentary was like a perfect do for me. Yeah. And it's where the game where people like, I need to like do a whole lot of content creating and then on my CLD, you go on TikTok, there's like tons here of videos. And I'm like, instead of creating some random content to promote myself, why not create the content about my story? Mm-hmm. Let me start my documenting right now. Some people would ask and be like, yo, I thought one of my friend and was like, once you like we tell you like a gone about them before you like put out the documentary period. You know, like you know, when you're saying like the little caddies and the rest of them that have like documentaries because they've already made it, made it. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I'm confident in the fact that my ghost grades I'm gonna make a huge tea in the music industry and in the music world. Let me show them the story. And then let them have something to the full true. Let him watch the journey. 
I think it's going to make the people connect more with me. It'll be like you know me. It's just like when you see an artist and you're starstruck. Yes. I seem I know you too much, but I don't know you. It actually happened to me. Yeah, it happened to me when I saw one artist and I was like, I feel like I knew her. I wanted to like call her to wave so she wave back, but she don't know me. So that's the kind of feeling I want to give to people like is I think you know me so well because you're full of the journey. You're seeing the behind the scenes clips. You're seeing like the processes and how we out before the shows. How like um during the recording sessions is like they connect more with me. Yeah. So it's like I'm I'm thinking about it of time. And then yeah, and I hope it works out well for me. Yeah. And it makes sense as well. I feel like a lot of the big documentaries like the Kaya one, or it was like a, I think twice did one, and like the Beatles and stuff like that, where it's like, it's really cool to see the journey in retrospect, but also being able to see it along the way is so much better. Like, and it's, yeah, it's, it's like watching Game of Thrones while it was on TV, <laughs> but it's just like going back and watching it now, and you're like, this is still good, but it's not average. And, and mine is like, I'm the original character. Some of these people, they are documentaries, they have to like pay some afterwards. Yeah. So then be their younger self and they grow into Yeah, like a long time burning it. Get up here. Yeah. But 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 look at me, I'm like they want in my story. And I'm like showing you the evolution, like the growths and it you will see the progress like each and every episode is like I'm talking it and it's like a motivation for me because I like thinking or oh, how could I make the next episode better? How could I give more to it? So there's need to be like a propeller for it to like do even more. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll take you more idea that and perform on this scene. Well perform all the stuff, create the creed that I knew about if you've done stuff that's less crazy before that. You know, yeah. like, oh now I know what goes into it. I can know and form the scene. Always we can do it. I've been I've been performing different places now. Like he got me before I came to bed and I never thought of me basking in me. But I was like, okay. Not for the money. Let's go and bask. I told my Paris and I told my Graffa, let's go and do it. I was just document. I was started playing in different sports. And it was amazing. Like you could see people. At some point the police came I get us to back up, I was like, oh shit. And everybody else stood and watched the police film. Yeah, like you could tell them, like, they're like, why are you stopping them? This kid, <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, I love this. They were went to the train, I was singing, and people just phones and then they like, phone called it. I was like, okay, I love this. That is like a motivation for me to even do more. Like, if I could capture all these moments, to do his own work, it just gives me more idea. Like, it propels me to like want to do more for the documentary, you know. And it, like, I'm thinking of ideas that will make people more intrigued. It's like a series, you have to make it better. I mean, then I'm better. It's like a movie, and I'm the director, and I'm like, okay, how are we going to get people in? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, I'm like thinking of strategies. So, I think the potential is like really a good idea for me. <laughs> Um, can you tell me a little bit about the dreams do come true music video? Because that was like very stylistic. They were like, let it start on those different locations. There's co- all those games of culture. Dreams of culture is an amazing one for me. Um, first of all, let me tell you how that one happened. And it, so I was like thinking of that Jokil and Neil song. I was working and the idea came. So there's this guy I've been saying online. When I was in Nigeria, he had a dope video. I was like, okay. And he produces by himself. So one time I was spinning through this Instagram that I saw his video. He was now in Belgium. And, and he just made a song. It was a sound engineer for Rihanna song. It lifts me up. It was part of the engineers. Yeah. And he was um, part of the production guys. I think one of the sound guys for the Black Panther, the Wakanda project. Yeah. So I was like, okay, his portfolio is big now. Yeah. Mine's verified at all. I was like, cool. I think I want to work with him now. And we are close to each other. Then I buzzed him up. I was like, let's make music together. How much da 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 da. And I was like, okay, cool. This is it. Then I flew to Belgium to meet him. 
I will meet the song, will make prayers come true. With the beats and the full core and everything less than five hours, we were done. It was so amazing. His name is Sebastian. He's amazing. I was like, okay, this guy is good like that. I can see why they could conduct you to like go up with for real as project of a hurricane game. So I had to like do something that if, if I have a good material from such producer, and then it kind of was a waste. We had to like shoot a really our video. So I went on Instagram again. Then I looked for videographers. And then I saw this guy, Luke. Then I posted them. And I was like, okay, bro. And I don't know that went. And he gave me his concept. I gave him my concept. Then we went for the video shoot. That Kelvin was the my now videographer. So everything was just aligning. So things we didn't even think we were gonna do, we were doing them and like we went we we, we shot no one in the house. It was cool with the girl. Everything was plus my outfit. I would like to style myself real good. Cause it's uh, how does he do it? So yeah, that was one of the it was like it was something it was like the the style of the way it kind of was a show was where he goes in. And oh, him and Kevin is crazy. Yeah, my videographer is like he's amazing. Like what he does is like has that one of the best stuff that he does with like videographing and like he's really really talented. That's what I want to work with him for very long part. He was like, oh, we did like this, we did like this. I'm like, okay, cool. Then we went out. They we shot some clips outside. It was cold as yeah, <laughs> brother. Yeah. Can I cuss? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. I can't hurt. So I was like, let's do it here. So we were like looking for like locations that were really, really amazing. And I'm glad everything came out really good. Like the more people saw the video, they were like, yo, it looks so good. My parents were so proud of me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm on my way. Yeah. Nah, it was it was good. I'm glad it came out so nice. So so glad it came out so nice. How much of it was planned? How much was like improvising on the day in the location? We were like, we also have action school, the nice school. Only a lot of it was improvised because there were so many things I wanted to do. They were like, you can't do this today because of the time. We can't do this today because of this. Yeah. But I was like, because I have too many concepts in my head. I wanted to do a car send. I wanted to do a drone send. <laughs> like in my head, like a pop, pop, pop. We were like, we could do it like this, like this. I was like, are you sure we could do it like this? And then, but I'm, I'm glad you're working all of because in my head, because I'm a very crazy person, I'd be like, I'd be like the second director. You know what I mean? I'd be like, yo, are you sure it's gonna come all right? Then, this shit's like so way high. Dude, the other video is like, I mean, like I like to like some really, really crazy shots, but the guys, were, they really know their stuff. They are really in, so they were like, okay, let's do this one, let's do this one. I know. Yeah. Bless the one. So, okay, you can edit. <laughs> I was like, um, let's, let's shoot it here. Let's do this here. And they were like, really cool people are listening to me. And I'm glad it tomorrow really nice. It is your songwriting and style a lot like that as well, where it's mostly like freestyle and then you take the bits of like or oh, you do like, okay, I wanna communicate this emotion. How about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's like a mix of both or even more. Cause sometimes it comes to me. Like sometimes I could be sitting down and the lyrics comes. Sometimes I could hear an instrumental and it comes and sometimes actually come up with like the actual idea for the song. Like I could be like, okay, I want to talk about the way this girl make me feel up. Yeah. Or the way she made me while I was with her. Or the way I felt while I was in this state of mind. And like dreams of culture, there were so many things I said there that some people don't understand were real facts. Like I went from making a lot of zeros in class and to making a lot of zeros in my bank accounts. That's not a lie. Yeah. Like, you know what zeros mean in class, like, like school, like the other thing to making a whole lot of, that's, that's fact. But some people would 
like do that emotions in like an Afrobeat song that some people would like. The beat may not make them listen to the internet thing like that, but I could convey those informations and those kind of songs too. So some balance, even when you're trying to like make a song for like dance, yeah, but it could still like convey some messages and enjoy them still. But when you when it's kind of like coming to you, how do you feel? How what do you think that is? Do you feel like you're an antenna for like? kind of anything that's happening, or do you feel like there's just connections from your brain to your past? What does that feel like to you? Man, when I feel this, my head just bring it down to me. <laughs> I feel this, like, the body is that natural, bro. Because, I don't know, sometimes it's like, I'm so in tune with music. Like, I love it so much, and it loves me too. Okay. So, it, it, like, it comes to me, like, it knows, like, this guy needs this slide. I should give it to him. But it just goes to my head. I'd be like, I could just be sitting down and it just goes like, da, 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 da. like okay. So yeah, I could put that I could put that down ASAP and I read out my phone and I just record it ASAP. And I'd be like, I put it somewhere. Then I could go to the studio and I'm, I'm listening for ideas and I'm like, okay. And that's how sometimes I come up with like songs and everything. And sometimes my guitarist is an amazing guy to Miguel. I be like, he comes in, this person is, I have this chord, I have this chord. And he just plays the chord. And I'm listening to the chords. And this is like the chords are singing to me. <laughs> like they have their own style. And I be like, okay, that's how Steve will make him about. Yeah. I've never made a song like Steve will make before now. But when I heard the chords, the chords made the song. Mm -hmm. Like the 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 way the chords are structured, that was how I went for the song. Yeah, yeah, and that was how I made that one. It was so really so that we performing in Berlin. He just comes up with the chords, mm -hmm. and I just sing the links. It's like a freestyle. It was an actual songs. No, the songs that I listened to them, I thought I was freestyling. With the words coming out of my mouth are actual like constructed songs. Like when you listen to the words of the songs, they are really good. We could do some like, um, oh, this was not supposed to be here. This is not supposed yeah, to be here. Yeah. But like the original idea from the freestyle, sometimes I like the songs because they align properly. Yeah, yeah that's how I come up from mine. Most of the time, sometimes. Has it always been like that? Or do you feel like there was a, maybe like after five, six years of, of writing lyrics, it was like starting to become songs instead of just long verses? I think because of how I started with like rhythm, being in the church, listening to a whole lot of songs. You know when songs, some songs when they're about to end, they have like a bit of space with just the instrumental. Yeah. So I used to freestyle on those little bars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's cool. I'd be like, those little spaces you leave in your music, I could put like melodies in them. I'd be like, okay. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, you just leave a little bit of space for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you left this space. <laughs> I'll be like, yes, I'm thinking on this space. Then I sing on it. So I've, I've used that as an avenue to grow. So I kept doing that, doing that, doing that. And now became like I was a freestyler. Mm -hmm. So I freestyle a whole lot. Like you could play any beat for me mm -hmm. and I could sing on it. Like... It just comes to me. So I was like that for a while. And I just kept getting better at it. So it was not like something that I just recently yeah, yeah. got acquainted to. It's like something that has been there for a very long while. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to make musically or with video or with style stuff that you haven't had the opportunity for yet? Oh, bro, there's too many. <laughs> too many, bro. Too many. I can't even. I just feel like the next ones we're going to, we're going to do, or the next projects I'm going to work on. Like I keep to, I keep topping what I've done before. Yeah. Like if you see Stay with Me, Stay with Me is like a movie. Mm -hmm. Like we had a train station. It, like I want to talk to your video guy because it <laughs> looks it looks like just the camera quality is so high, and I was like, <laughs> what the? This looks like 4K. I don't Bro, know. Bro, like, it's it's 4K. Yeah, yeah. Bro, we 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 do like scenes in like different places if you like see the stay with me video where the 
the trains cross parts. Mm-hmm. Bro, like, I want to do so much creative stuff. Like, I got reached out to by one of the big heads in the game in Berlin. He said my video, when he saw my video and how creative it was, he said he knew that the budget may not be too much, but the way you guys were able to come up with this idea yeah, and the sound, your sound is so original. He was like, I have to work with you. Nice. Just he yeah. saw the video and the video just intrigued him a whole lot to like reach out to me and be like, yo, let's work. Cool. Is there anywhere you keep ideas as you come up with them or is it more like if they're really good, they'll stick in my brain? Do you want me to tell the secret to the people? Please. They'll, they'll steal the ideas. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I write, I write my ideas down in different places so I don't forget sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I have too many gadgets, so I write them down in different gadgets. Mm-hmm. I'll be like, yo... It depends on where it comes to me. If the idea comes to me I'm a, and I'm with my laptop, I just be like, pa, 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 on my yeah. notepad. If mm-hmm. the idea comes to me and I'm with my phone, I just like voice recording or like I write yeah, it down. Yeah. So I have like different places. I, sometimes I store some information on my email too. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'd be like, yo, this idea, you're not going anywhere because I'm thinking too fast mm-hmm. and I don't want to lose any idea, so I'm like yeah. stacking them up like, don't worry, when I need you, I'll use you, but just be there. Mm-hmm. So I stack them up in different places. When you're like at home, just working on anything, just like trying to get ideas out, are you going through all of those? And yeah, looking for yeah, stuff yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you just forget about them. Sometimes you make yeah. some stuff, so you just forget and you just be like, okay, today let me check my phone and see my memories and see what I've come up with like in the past years mm-hmm. and you just listen to some ideas that you had then and you'd be like yo this is so good yeah and if you're like with the producer asap i'm recording it mm-hmm. that's how fast i am like i work very fast i like to like make the music asap and once i make the music i'm in a hurry to drop it yeah some people i like they heard the music they'll be mm-hmm. like oh the right time I mean, is there any right time? You make the time That's, right that yourself. That was my thinking as well. Nah, like, you make the time right yourself. I'd be like, before I get tired of the song yeah. or before I outgrow the song, I have to put it out for the audience to listen. And I believe that some songs are classics. Mm. They'll stay forever. Whether you release it now or you release it later, it's still going to be relevant. Yeah. And that's the kind of music I want to make, you know. And Those, if there is a right time, either you release it at the right time or if you release it before, it still exists in the right time. Exactly. So, so yeah. I don't know why people hold music, but I, <laughs> but I don't. I don't. I like music and I make it, I'll be like, yo, the audience has to listen to this because it's going to bang for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there anything like, I'm thinking, I feel like the way that you're really passionate about music reminds me a little bit of Rick Rubin of like trying to get like energy right and everything from Ooh. doing it. Is there anything in terms of creating the right energy for you when you're creating that you found really works well? I mean, I, I like it when there's less people in the studio when I'm recording. Same, yeah. I like it when, when, when there's less noise. Mm-hmm. Like me and the producer alone. Yeah. Or any instrumentalist that is playing the instrument. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I don't really like when people are saying, like, I'm like, this idea could work. And you're not the producer or somebody that is yeah. involved in the process of making the music and you'll be like, no, 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 put this one, put this one, put this mm-hmm. one, put this one. Like too many cooks spoil the mm-hmm. what, the bacon the dish, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how they say <laughs> that, but I know it sounds something like that. <laughs> but like, and I hate negative energies. Like when I'm trying to like come up with something and you'll be like, are you sure the people are going to like this one? I'll be like, yo, don't worry. <laughs> when they listen to it, they would love it. Yeah. So that's the process I, I like to take. But sometimes you can't just chase people out of the studio. You just yeah, let them yeah. be. And then it's going to make it the energy worse from chasing them out because it's like creating exactly. this negative moment. No, exactly. So I just leave everybody in the studio and just sing. And they'll be like, yes, yes, yes. That's <laughs> some good sound. I'll be like, okay, this is good energy still. So I just be like, you stay in the studio, stay in the studio. Yeah. But 
for energy wise, if I had like a really bougie studio, mm-hmm. I'd be like me in the booth, the producer outside, turn off the light, me alone with the mic, mm. and he just plays the instrumental, and I just sing on it. Like I just go crazy. Yeah, I envision that. I think when 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 my bag is big. Like my money bag is really <laughs> huge. I think I would record some songs in that style, like mm-hmm. turn of the lights in the booth where I'm recording. The producer is outside. It just be like, yo, Das, are you ready? I play it. And mm-hmm. I just record like that. Yeah. Like that would be a really cool way to record. Mm-hmm. Is that how you feel when you perform as well? Is it kind of like everything disappears and it's you in the mic? Oh boy. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Like when you're in the zone, not when you're just like starting out Bro, and you're like, fuck. Nah, nah. See, yeah, sometimes there was a time I was performing one time and I zo- zoned out. Mm-hmm. Like my body, my, my soul left myself. I was yeah. in the middle of a song I was singing and I felt I just left myself and I came back and I was like, yo, the audience are still here. Like in my head, it was like a split second. Like I was singing a song and I was like, I just went off. I was closing my eyes. You know when you want to like make everyone not be there, yeah. but you're just performing. But this one was like, I did it and I left myself. Mm-hmm. Then I had to like, pa, pa, pa. Bro, the audience are still looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, then I turned. Nah, mm-hmm. for, for, for me as a performer, you have to connect with the audience. So I don't like to like make it look like the audience are not there. Yeah, yeah. I like to like look them sometimes. Sometimes I close my eyes. Sometimes I like to connect with them. Sometimes I like them to sing with me because I'm looking at them. Their energy, I'm feeding off their energy sometimes. Mm-hmm. That's why I like it when I go to uh, shows and the people are dancing and the people are happy people. Yeah. Like it gives me so much joy to like see those kind of people in the shows. Like they... Once you feel, like as an artist, you feed off those kind of energies, it gives you more hype. Yeah. You even give them more better show. Like when you see people dancing to your song, I'll be like, okay, you want to dance? I'll give you <laughs> more steps. I'm from Nigeria. I'll be like, yeah. yes, sir, boss of the move for them. But it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. For me, nah, I don't close my eyes to like make them disappear. Mm-hmm. I close it so that I get my energy right. Yeah. Then I open it to look at them and connect with them. And mm-hmm. it's it's beautiful for me. Yeah, nice. Um, and that's I guess like when they're dancing, you kind of you get the opportunity to disappear and bring them with you a little bit instead yeah. of being like, oh, they're dancing, let's double down or like whatever the rational like logic emotion side of it would be. Oh, I double down. <laughs> 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 nah, once they are dancing, I'm dancing too. Nice. I'm going into match their the middle energy. to dance. Yeah. I match the energy times too. Mm-hmm. If I see my fans dancing, yeah. if you watch me perform, sometimes you see me go to the stage and dance with the audience. Mm-hmm. Like I could hold one's hand and spin around and be <laughs> like, yo, my bro. And I'm dancing with them. Like I like the energy to be proper. Like even I'm performing, I want to give you a show. Yeah. I want to give you an experience that you go back home and be like, yo, that was one of the best shows I've ever been to. Yeah. That's the kind of feeling I like to give people when they're coming to my shows or the shows I'm performing at. Is it at the shows where I'm singing alone or the shows where I'm doing the songs where you have to dance? I give you the feeling that you'll be like, I want to hear him again, mm-hmm. yeah. again and again and again. Those are the kind of shows I like. Beautiful. Well, we've done almost an hour. Thinking really? Sh- yeah. Thinking of shows, is, is there any, are there any coming up? Obviously, this comes out in like August, so I don't know if you have it planned already. August. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have plans for August, but different shows keep coming. But like some people ask me like, when is your next year? When is your next year? I'll be like, sometimes I don't even know. My next year <laughs> could be tomorrow. Yeah. It could be next tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Once I get contacted to be like, yo, yo, that's pull up. Mm-hmm. We're having a show here. Do you want to perform? I'd be like, yes, I'm yeah. hungry for this shit. <laughs> I love this shit with every bit of me. So I'd be like, I'm performing anywhere. So mostly, 
I don't know when the next show would be. Mm-hmm. It just yeah, depends yeah. when I'm contacted or when I want it to be. Yeah. So tomorrow I could be on my bed and I could think of like, okay, we could have a show tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I just buzz up my people. I'll be like, let's have a show tomorrow. So yeah. that's how it happens. But for now, I don't have like a specific date mm-hmm. for the next show. But yes. it could be tomorrow. Um, are there any venues that you, just like a last question before we, before we finish up. Are there any venues or festivals or like events that you look at and you're like, oh, I really want to, that's like a next year or like five year goal where you're like, Bro, this is cool as fuck. I feel like with the grace of God, there's nothing I can achieve. Mm-hmm. I could be performing in the Grammys in the next five years, in the next three years, in the next two years, or in the next one year. Nice. I feel I don't limit myself to like small things. Mm-hmm. I see myself in bigger stages. Right. Like I'm manifesting this. I'll be performing in a venue where they have like 10,000, 20,000, 30. Yeah, in the next year, or oh, this year, this mm-hmm. year. Why am I saying next year? <laughs> this year, this yeah. year. Now, for sure, this year. Why would I say next year? Next year is too far. This year, <laughs> I would perform in venues that have like twenty thousand, ten thousand people. Yes, nice. I'm manifesting it. It's gonna work out. Mm. I manifested it on your podcast. Yeah, it's <laughs> happening now. So um, when you see me there, you'll be like, "Yo, he told me this." Mm-hmm. exactly yeah and all the people hopefully all the people watching will be like hey he's doing it you have to you have to watch yeah i well, told you here first <laughs> <laughs> well stay with me is out the video is out the yeah. song is out go check it out um yeah you're clear you're so passionate about music it's flowing out of you it's Bro, awesome i love and... music with every bit of me <laughs> like every bit of me loves music so yeah. much i could do music I want, why am I saying I could do music? I you would do music, music for the rest of my life. I love nice. music so much. So, so much. And I know that it's going to be all worth it at the end because I mm-hmm. really love it. Beyond words, yeah. music. Music is like. It's beyond words. I mean, it's like why you do it, right? It's like. Man, you can't explain. It's, it's better explain because it's it. beyond words. Yes. Yeah. Like. There are feelings that you can't explain. Mm-hmm. Like I eat, drink, shit music. <laughs> like I love, I love it so much, and I'm glad it loves me too. Mm-hmm. That I'm so blessed to have this opportunity to, to like share what God has blessed me with. You know. Yeah. So I'm really grateful to be able to do music because, man, I love music. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming. Man, I'm blessed, and thank you for having me. Anytime. Thank you so much. Awesome. We're done.